When you deal in a world <laughs> shaken and acting up like it is, actually when you deal in a world that is literally falling apart at the seams, it would be easy to get distracted by the attraction of all the things that are going wrong as opposed to the things that might be happening that are right. You see, God knows and God planned for these times and that's why he chose you for such a time as this. Yes, the world is coming to an end. Yes, things are getting darker. But likewise, people are beginning to separate in some ways where you can tell the darkness from the light. It's kind of like the old comic books. You know, there's a old Batman comic book. You knew that Batman was good because he was so right. He always made the right decisions and choices. You know, and you could tell that that, that was the good guy, Batman. Well, then now they have new movies out, you know, like this new Batman movie where they're coming out with more violence and more kind of like getting into the world and its ways. Well, you can tell that that's worldly and ungodly because it's so violent and so cruel and so out there that it seeks to glorify those things that are not godly. You see, when God deals with judgment, he doesn't go out and torture people and he doesn't go out and you know wipe them out. He just simply eliminates them, period. It's over with. Oh, sure, some things are graphically described, but that's from man's point of view. As far as God's concerned, He's casting everything into Lake of Fire to cleanse it. Because, frankly, we've done a pretty good job of kind of putting our stamp on the world and making it look kind of like it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. You know, violence filled the earth. And if you look at almost everything going on today, there's violence everywhere. Violent people killing each other, violence in the movies, violence in the home, violence even in the church of all places, people yelling at each other and screaming, you know, and calling each other names. When we look at those things, we would become discouraged unless we remember we are the encourager. We are the encouragement. We have within us the Holy Spirit that binds us together, that reminds us that they'll know we are Christians by our love, not by our mouth. They'll know we are Christians by our attitude not by our direction of reflection when we look at the world and say, oh, it's coming to an end. The reality of what we are is always found in what we try to do. And that's we try to do our best and pray that it's blessed and Jesus takes care of the rest. Because you see, when God is on your side doing what he does, all we need to do is offer the best that we have to him. Kind of like Cain and Abel. Some people say, well, you know, Cain slew Abel, and boy, Abel had a bummer. Not really. Abel went to be with the Lord. You see, that's the whole point, is that the reality of our life isn't about the things we accumulate or how long we live in this hell hole that we call earth, because right now, being under a curse, we're living in hell, or we're living in the closest thing we come to hell. But you know what? We're going to have a thousand years of all things right here on earth to enjoy with Jesus. Beyond that, we have eternity coming and then a new heaven and a new earth and a, a reserved place in New Jerusalem. It's like, wow, cool. Man, we got all this stuff coming that's new. So why would we deal with the old? So every day when you wake up, don't get discouraged by the things that are happening in the world because when things are passing away, there's always this kind of like clinging to it, trying to keep it alive. It's like my plants. You know, my plants will have a dead leaf and they'll try to keep that leaf alive. You know, it'll keep putting sustenance towards it and energy and, you know, water and whatever it can pull from the roots. It'll suck it up and keep pushing it at that damaged root until I cut it off. And then when I cut it off, it's like, wow, the plant begins to thrive again and to grow because it was carrying that damaged root. God is doing surgery in the spirit. He's causing some people to show where they're coming from and where they're going with the world. And sadly, they've chosen a direction and a path that leads to destruction. But we need not be so. 
because we need to choose the direction of the attitude of our heart and the intention of our spirit so that we would always reflect that which God planned out for us from the moment of creation before the world was ever framed he laid out our names in his book of life and he said this is the one that I have chosen for salvation so knowing that God chose you and knowing that God blesses you and knowing that you're with God just do your best Keith Green used to sing it do your best and pray that it's blessed and Jesus takes care of the rest and really when you know God will bring the increase, when you know that God can take that which was meant for evil and make it into good, when you know that God is at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure, when you know that it's all about God, then you can turn to Jesus and say, thank you for today. Because no matter what comes, if you turn the day over to God, the Lord allowed that to come to you in this day that he has made just for you. Do your best, but if anyone should sin, we have an advocate, one who will intercede for us with the Father. It is Jesus Christ, and he, that same Jesus himself, is the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours alone, but for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 2, 1 through 2. You are responsible to people, but God has not made you responsible for their joy. You may have children or siblings or a spouse God has given you to love and nurture who seem uninterested in your testimony. Some people just refuse to be happy. So don't let them steal your joy. You cannot fix anyone and you shouldn't take the blame for everyone or everything that goes wrong in someone else's life. Obviously, you cannot make everybody you know believe in Jesus. But you can get up every day and do your best and then trust God for the rest. As joyful as I can be at times of thinking about Jesus and sitting here on the quiet time of my day, because it's going to get crazy, I could be at peace and be still. But there's a part of me that just looks out and, just like Keith Green sang one time, I mentioned Keith Green a lot, <laughs> but like Keith Green sang a lot, you know, I wanted to build a highway to the sky meaning that he wanted to bring millions and thousands and billions of people to God. Wanted everyone to get saved. And you know, <laughs> so do I. I want everyone to be saved. It's not anybody I don't want to be saved. Everyone that I can think of, that I can imagine, that I've seen or heard or, or people talk about. It doesn't matter who it is, whether they be Muslim or the president or anybody. I don't care. I want them all saved. God knows. My heart is right. When it comes to salvation, my heart is fixed. I would not that any should perish, but that all should come to Jesus Christ, whether it be the child molester or anyone. I want all of them to come to Jesus because no way in heaven or in earth can any person be changed or rearranged or fixed or made new, brand new, or become a new creation except that they come to Jesus because everything else will fail. You'll see the repeat offenders and everything else. But man, when you come to Jesus, huh, man, the hope of glory, the hope of salvation, the realization that God can change every single living soul in the blink of an eye. Oh, that man would turn to God as creator and rejoice in the day that he has made. For that, I thank God every day that I have one more day to share Jesus in a simple, humble way and relate what he has done in my life and what he may do in your life as you choose to serve him these last days of our lives as we live them out because we have so little time left. Couldn't we go out with a bang? Couldn't we go out with a joy? Couldn't we go out with a shout? You know, of woohoo! Yippee! Wow! Cool! Maranatha. Amen. Praise the Lord. Couldn't we go out with the joy of the Lord? Maybe. Just maybe if we do, God will see us through. And we'll see more come to Jesus than we ever dreamed imagined. And we'll 
rejoice in heaven when we go home to that marriage supper that is intended not just for those that are righteous and holy, but everyone that <coughs> calls upon the name of the Lord to be saved and God has mercy upon. So today, yeah, maybe you might not build a highway to the sky, and maybe neither will I. Maybe we might stumble and fumble and crumble, you know, underneath the load of the world and its ways. But God knows, and God cares, and God's going to take us there, home. Because God knows this is not where you belong. All I know and all I've ever lived is the whole idea that this, this life was temporary until we get on with real living. And that's the reality of Jesus in you, the hope of glory. God is taking you to a place that he designed just for you.